You ever heard of the term hypo arousal? Yes. So I've heard you talk about it a couple times. The problem with this idea of being hypo aroused, playing possum, the feign response, is it's not widely studied. Um, there's a, a woman named Amanda Ripley. Uh, have you ever interviewed Amanda Ripley? No. Uh, she, she wrote the book Unthinkable. And it's a real good uh, uh, book on why people live, why people die. I'm fascinated by that shit and survival. Um, she talks about the Virginia Tech shooting. Um, horrible circumstance that took place at Virginia Tech where shooter goes into the school, kills 32 people, and then kills himself. He goes classroom to classroom shooting students, like one at a time, uh, at, at will, at random, shooting them in the head, like 93% or more of the people he shot, he shot in the head. So he's just walking one by one. And this is this is this is on me too. This is something fucked up I used to do. I used to teach this course warrior mindset. You know, this 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 idea about oh we gotta have a warrior fucking mindset. And when I taught it, I used to use Virginia Tech as an example. And I would say, when does it become real for you to get off your ass and fight for your life? Is it when the 10th student closest to the door gets popped in the fucking head by a semi-automatic pistol? Or is it the second person, the third person? Or maybe your friend, because friends sit together in classrooms. Was it your friend? Was it your friend that woke you up so you could fight for your life? Or was it when the Glock was put against the back of your head and then you went, oh, I need to fight, and then you got popped in it, and it's too late, you're fucking dead? Why did nobody fight? And that's because I didn't know better. I was ignorant to the science. There is a response, as noted uh, by Amanda Ripley and in, in different experiments, of uh, the chicken. You take the chicken and you scare the shit out of it. You put its head on a table like you're going to lob it off and you pet it. It will freeze in paralysis, right? Hypo arousal, not, not to be confused with hyper arousal, is part of the parasympathetic nervous system. And it will shut your shit down. And what happened in Virginia Tech is there was a student, and one of the students in the classroom of 13 pretended to be dead. He said when the shooter came in, he heard gunshots, and he put himself in a, in a, 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 a situation physically where he looked like he was shot. And as the shooter bypassed him one at a time, he heard and was conscious to things, but he was frozen in place. He had paralysis. He said at one point he thought he was shot because he went to move and his legs didn't work. And he was aware, but he was frozen. The shooter left, reloaded, came back, bypassed him again, and continued to shoot. Everybody in that classroom got shot. Nine of the 13 got killed. And he survived. And when he talks about it in reflection in the book Unthinkable, he says, when I went to move, my legs wouldn't work, and I thought I was shot, and I said to myself, this isn't so bad. And he came to terms with everything. There was no pain, there was no suffering. That's because he was hypo aroused. And sexual trauma victims, by the way, refer to this. They say, um, I couldn't fight and I feel guilty because I should have fought. Mm. There's a statistic that was done on sexual assault victims where 10% claimed that they were in paralysis. What's unique about that situation is it's more, 10% is more than the percentage of people who fought. So a sympathetic response versus a parasympathetic response, which means in us, we have a mechanism to quit, to check the fuck out. What do you think that's for? It will, in the, they studied it and they think, this is all speculation, uh, like the possum effect, they think it is for um, the predator to assume the prey is tainted. Bacteria, virus, not good to eat. And it wouldn't be beneficial for a predator to eat prey that's fucked up, right? Really? Because if you're tainted and it eats you, it, it could mean the difference between survival for itself and its family, the, the cubs, the, the wolf pack. But does it have to have some natural selection aspect to it or could it just be just overwhelming stimuli and the inability to handle it so everything just shuts down? Well, it's both because the unique thing about human beings is we have, you know, call us, we, we're parallel primates, right? We, we go through a situation, like let's say we're walking down a trail and I see a snake. If I see a snake on the ground, I jump back because I'm, oh shit, it's a snake. Well, why did I jump back? 
learned behavior. Maybe it was genetically imprinted. Uh, maybe my dad taught me. Uh, maybe I just didn't want to die and my central nerve system activated. The difference is animals do that, except when animals do it, they jump and they navigate it, right? It, it's very primal for them. When we do it, we jump back and then we stare at the fucking snake and we go, dude, I don't want to fucking die. I got kids at home. I don't want to fucking die. If I die, you know, tell my wife I love them. Like, dude, that's a fucking, like, that's a gardener snake. You're good. You're not going to die. Like, oh, okay, cool, right? And you move on. Well, we have this fear of impending doom and we have this emotional mechanism where we try to uh, create the narrative and contemplation and understanding these things. Because we can figure out like what could go wrong. We could figure out the courses of action that could lead to the bad outcome or yeah. the good outcome. So here's, the, here's what I think is unique in, in teaching resilience. So in combat, it's funny because Amanda Ripley talks about this and asking people in law enforcement and military have they experienced this. Dude, I've experienced this so many damn times. I have one one time I was in a a, a gunfight in um in Iraq, and I was in a ditch. There was a group of Navy SEALs up in a compound providing security. My buddy Kevin Owens, who works for me now, he's a accomplished sniper in Green Beret. He was on twin two forty machine guns, like in a vehicle. I was in this ditch, and we were looking for improv improvised explosive devices, like caches, whatever whatever's going to be in a ditch, bad guys. And I have night vision and an infrared laser. And I'm shining in this ditch. And the Iraqi, who's the tier one Iraqi counterterrorism force guy, super squared away guys, he shines his white light in the ditch. And when he does that, a PKM machine gun opens up on my position. So 7.62 by 54 rimmed, ga 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 ga, and it's firing at us, and tracers go over our heads. I fall on my ass, lift my gun, and start shooting at the point of origin, the poo site. So I'm shooting at the, the position, and I look down, and he's in the fetal position. And I'm like, dude, get the fuck up. And I hit him. And I know this dude. I've trained with this dude. And he's in the fetal, and he's frozen in place. I'm like, get the fuck up. Get up. And he won't move. So I grab him and drag him 20 yards while the, the seals... Uh, in the compound wall or react into contact and I drag him across this field and get him into the compound wall and I'm like shaking him. I'm like, dude, what, what the fuck is wrong with you? And he kind of, he wakes up. And one of the problems in the mechanism of hi being hypo aroused is opiates are pushed into your system to disassociate the trauma. Mm. Some even speculate to disassociate the transition from life to death to make it easier. Mm.